Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at heat streams. Now, heat streams is kind of an interesting visual. It's very similar to like a table heat map, uh, but it allows you to, again, to visualize and compare categorical values over time. So you can see categorical doubt values in this case being individuals on the left hand side, and then going horizontally across the bottom is showing a time element. The time element on the bottom can either be a date value or it can be an integer value as well or number value. Now you do have multiple ways that you can actually show the heat stream. So the, the color values that you see in the middle there are all blue based in this screenshot. But you have a couple different ways that you can be able to visualize that. You have sequential, you have divergent, and categorical color schemes that you can choose from. This visual is developed by Microsoft. Uh, it's a pretty quick one to show. Let's go ahead and walk you through how to use heat streams in our own example. All right, so for this example, we're going to start by bringing in some sales data. We're going to be looking at sales by state. And so we'll go find our data set first by going up to the Get Data section. And then we'll select Excel as our source. Now, the file I'm going to be using for this example is going to be called Monthly Sales by State. Nothing particularly uh, fancy about this file, but I'll go ahead and select it and hit Open. Now, if you remember, one of the values that we need to have is either a number value or a date value to be able to show on the horizontal axis on the bottom of the heat stream. In this case, we do have a month name, but because it's a text field, that actually won't work there. What we could use instead is this calendar month number. So we'll need to keep that in mind as we go to actually use this visual. On the uh, X axis, we'll have the state. And then in the middle section where we actually see the different color values, we'll have the profit value. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit load to bring this in. And so we can kind of get an idea of how this works. I'm also going to bring in a regular table here as well. So I'll bring in a table. And in that table, we'll look at the states and the profit for those states, like so. And so we can see this a little better. I'll go ahead and increase the text size of that. That's awfully small, a little bit difficult to read. So we'll bump that up quite a bit so it's very clear here. And then our next step is going to be to bring in the heat stream. Now, the heat stream is a custom visual, of course. So if you want to bring in the custom visual, you need to come up to the top section here, or you can click on the little ellipses here. And you'll select that you want to bring it in or import it from a store. You could also have downloaded it from the store ahead of time. I'm going to select import from a store. And once we do that, I'm going to search for heat stream. I think it's actually heat streams. Yep, it sure is. And we'll go ahead and add this, this visual to our Power BI desktop by clicking add. And then we should see after a moment or two that show up here inside the visualization window. We can select the heat streams visual and let's make that go ahead and take up the top part of our screen here. And then what we'll place inside of this is we're going to look at the state as a category. So we'll drop the state into the category section. The profit is going to be the score that we're analyzing. And then the time on the bottom, again, that one can be either a date or it can be a number value. And so I have the calendar month number right here. I can drag the calendar month number down to the bottom. And you can see how it's uh, visualizing that here for us. Now, there's a few things here you'll notice uh, first off the bat here that it is kind of thin. It's kind of tiny to read. We can do some things to adjust that. We will do that as we get going through this example. There's some things we can do to kind of change the size of how it's displayed, both vertically and horizontally. So there's, there'll be a few things we can play around with there. Now, as far as the interaction, though, before I go into the format section, I should show you here at least how you can interact with this visual. It's all click-based or selection-based. So if I click on, for example, the state of Florida, you'll notice it selects that entire row. And you can also see it filters down my table based on that. It works both ways. And by the way, if you want to unselect it, you just click it again. If I select New York in my table, you should see that it also filters the heat streams. So it does have a little cross-highlighting or cross-filtering available inside of this visual, just like many of the other visuals as well. All right, so to the formatting, let's talk about the formatting. If I select the heat streams, visual here and go to the format paintbrush area. You'll see there's really two sections that are devoted to this visual. The rest of them are ones that are commonly available and really all of the uh, visuals that you'll find. And uh, in this case, what we're going to do is I'm going to start with the uh, view settings. Let's go into the view settings and we'll highlight a few of the things underneath the data settings. There's not a ton that we're going to mess with for our example. So a couple things that we might want to do is we may want to change something like the highlight option. Remember I showed you a moment ago when you select a row or select a value, you'll see it highlights the cell and it highlights it in this kind of gray value that's a little difficult to read. So you can actually change that highlight color if you wanted here, maybe to something like a red. So it stands out a little bit more that way you can see it. So here you can see as I change the color of the highlight color property to red, it uh, highlights it in red around that value. You can also change things like the, the row height. So notice here if I change the row height and increase the height a little bit, maybe to 17, it actually makes it a little taller. You can bump it up a little bit more even beyond that if you wanted to. So that way it's a little easier to view that value here. 
You can also change the text percent. Now, the text percent cha- has to do with the amount of uh, space that's taken up on the left-hand side where the category is. So if I wanted to, because there's a lot of white space here, I could lower that maybe to something like 7, and you can see it uh, kind of perfectly fits now within inside of that range of values that we have. You can also change the row gap. The row gap is, uh, it might be kind of hard to see, but there's actually a little bit of space. There's a white space in between each of the rows here. If you turn off row gap, notice what happens when I do this. You can see that a little bit of change, a little bit of less space in between each of the values there. I'm going to leave that off. We don't need the row gap on for this. You can also uh, change the zoom level. So the zoom level will allow you to zoom in more if you wanted to. So I can change this to 1.2. It zooms in a little bit farther into the values. You can see that in a lot of it's going off the page here now. Or you can zoom out some, and I can say 0.8, and now it's more clearly displaying all the values that I have here. So that's really up to you how you want to do that. I might do 0.9 here. It kind of perfectly fits within our design surface that way. You can also change the number of tick marks. So you can see the tick marks displaying right here. There's showing 4.5. Well, I don't really measure months by uh, 0.5 months. So I could come down here to the bottom where it says number axes, and I can tell it that I only want to see 12 tick marks here, and uh, that it's more properly showing each of the months I have. If you don't like that it's showing values, you can actually turn that off. You can see there's a show value option here. If you flip that off, it just shows the color. And you can still see the values if you hover above each of them with the tooltip. So I'm going to leave it like that. I kind of like it like that. You can also turn off the category values over here on this last, last one. If you uh, turn off show categories, it just leaves you with the colors. I'm not sure if that's very helpful, but you have that as an option. For this, for this demonstration, it's not very helpful, but maybe for a different one, you might need it. And then the last piece in here that I kind of skipped over on purpose was the theme. Here you can change the colors that are used. So I can change the diverging colors here if I wanted to. I can change it to more of a sequential color where it's all grays if I wanted to, or maybe all reds if I wanted to. I could also change it to more categorical focused. So here we're kind of looking at the different categories. But I think in this case, it's probably diverging is the best. And I might choose the red, yellow, green diverging here in this case. So it is different than what we started with, but it's um, red, yellow, green in this case. Red being the worst, green being the best. All right, next we're going to go up to the data settings and there's be a little bit of things we'll highlight in here not all of them necessarily but you can change the data buckets so if you wanted to tell it that hey we're really looking at monthly values you can do that it's not going to impact it necessarily for what we're seeing here but you could adjust that you could also adjust the size of the buckets right now this bucket this value bucket is set to one if i were to lower this a little bit you'll notice that it actually shrinks the size of these a little bit so you, that might be something you might want to do for whatever reason you can do that i'm going to leave it as one for our example you could also change the min and max score. So keep in mind this has to do with the profit value that we have. If you look at the score property we have, you can actually adjust the min and the max of that manually if you wanted to. You could also change and do some different scaling. So if you wanted to actually adjust it so that it makes uh, more of a log scale, a different reference point for as far as scaling goes, you can adjust that. You can also change the sort order. So right now it's sorting these rows. So this is affecting the sort of the rows. I can change the row sort order by the name, the average of the values in the middle, the maximum value. So which one ever has the maximum value? I think New York looks like it has the highest max. I can see New York now flips to the top. You can change by density. So the number of values, really the number of values is uh, same for all of these. You can change it based on the sum, which I, you can you can kind of see how that would affect it. I'm going to leave it as name. And by the way, you can also see here you can that you can invert the sort order as well. So if I flip that to on, it's going to invert the sort order and do the opposite of the name sort order, which is kind of an A to Z sorting. So a few things tonight that are nice in here to help maybe kind of fine-tune how you display this one, but it's a nice little visual. There are some other ones out there that are similar to this, but they have a few distinct or interesting settings in this one that you might not see in the other ones. So I hope you guys enjoyed this heat streams visual and look forward to showing you our next visual in our next module.